So look at verse number 14. The Bible says this, this is when Jesus is explaining the parable of the sower. He says, the sower soweth the word. So he's talking about some guy going out and sowing seeds. He's explaining, well, that's actually somebody preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. They're actually sowing the word of, the word of God. Excuse me. And these are they that, that uh, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, so people that hear the gospel, the sower's going out and preaching, they hear the word of God, they hear the gospel, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Why? Because he doesn't want them to get saved. He doesn't want people having the opportunity for that seed to flourish. So he's going to go and just try to make them forget, try to get them distracted from thinking about the gospel. These are the people who, you know, maybe I'll hear you again on this matter, or I need some time to think about it, right? When you go to the door, you sow the seed in their heart. They're not convinced. Maybe they don't fully understand. They just want to think about it. They're not ready to, to just decide to put all their faith in Christ at that moment. Well, you know what Satan's going to do right away? And it's a lot easier. I mean, that's a real easy target. Someone who's not even saved yet just to get them distracted, get them focused on some other thing, and to then not, you know, the word will then end up just going in one ear and out the other. Uh, but this is, this is something he does. Clearly, Scripture teaches that. This is one thing that, that the devil does. And um, I know it's probably a little bit out of order, but turn, turn to Acts chapter 19 real quick, because I want you to see this too. Just on my previous point, the purpose for the devil, he's not, he doesn't want to waste his time on people who are already fallen into bondage of sin because they're not living for God. They're not doing anything. Acts chapter 19 demonstrates, because it's not just Satan, it's Satan and his devils, right? There's other devils, there's other demons that go around and will do the same, you know, follow the same work as, the, as Satan does. And um, we see a story here of um, how these Jews were trying to perform exorcisms. They're trying to cast out devils. And look at verse number 13, Acts chapter 19, the Bible says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. So they're just like, they see the apostles like casting out devils. And they're just like, well, we don't know how he does it. They're, they're invoking the name of Jesus because they'll see the apostles, you know, casting out devils under the authority of Jesus Christ. So they're trying to mimic that, but they don't have the power because these guys aren't even saved. I mean, they're not going out and doing, you know, casting them out. They don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. So they're just trying to repeat what they've seen. And what's really interesting, though, is how the devil responds to their command to get out. Verse number 14 says, And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? They say, oh yeah, I know who Jesus is. Yep, I know exactly who Paul is, because he mentions both names. You know, by, by the authority of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preacheth, right? That same, you know, the same Jesus that Paul preaches. And they're like, well, we know who Jesus is. We know who Paul is. Who are ye? And then the man in the, whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. But what's interesting about that is the devil knew who's doing the work. You better believe that devil knew who Jesus was. That devil knew who the apostle Paul was because the apostle Paul is going out and getting people saved because that devil is trying to fight against the things of Jesus Christ and the things of the apostle Paul. So, the attacks are going to be, you know, the people who are doing the most work, people like the Apostle Paul, they're going to experience a lot more of the attacks because people like that are, are doing immense work for the Lord. So, yeah, you better believe the devil doesn't like that. It makes him angry. He's going to want to stop that at all costs. That's why you end up seeing, you know, churches, great churches, churches that do a lot for the Lord, eventually will inevitably succumb to some type of split, some type of fracture, some type of break because of the relentless attacks from Satan. It, it just a matter of time. Unfortunately, I mean, it's just a sad truth. It's the way it is. 
I mean, the churches that the apostles went to, I'm sure, were great churches, right? There was great churches in Jerusalem at one point. Where are they now? They've all come and gone. And the great churches of today, they're going to come. We're going to try. We're going to do our best to make sure, you know, this church or any other church that you, you're a part of can just stay on fire and, and keep doing things. It might take a generation or two, but eventually... You know, the, the more you're continuing to do work, the attacks are going to come until Satan finds a way to split it up, break it up, and stop the work that's being done.